Hi, hello, and welcome. I'm definitely not Vlad, and you're watching me pug my way to 2.8k rating on a Guardian Druid in Dragonflight Season 2. Do please ignore this black bar over here, and that's something for future you to worry about if you decide to keep watching videos. But yeah, in this episode, we're actually going to go and do the last dungeon on Tyrannical Week that we have to do on 20. It's Halls of Infusion. It's been really rough to find a group that'll take me, but hopefully now I do. If I can't find any group that's going to take me, I'm just going to keep doing my other 20s until I get a rerolled key that's going to give me Halls of Infusion, or I get my key to turn into a Halls of Infusion, and then I'll run my own key. Fuck them. But before I do any of that, what I really want to do is is actually go and do a practice run of Fault Halls of Infusion to see how I, I can move the mobs around and how I can take care of the different sanguine situations just to get familiar with the dungeon and the trash. I don't really go, want to go in there blind and just not know how to handle a situation with sanguine because sanguine can really turn your pulls upside down very quickly. So I did a 17 Halls of Infusion to figure out what I'm going to do with the different trash mobs in sanguine. It turns out that the first room is the worst and then after that it's Pretty much straightforward and very easy, just kiting mobs out of Sanguine and that's it. In the first pull, you're immediately introduced into all of the bullshit that you can expect from the rest of the first room. One huge thing to look out for, and that's this is the case, Sanguine or no Sanguine, you need to interrupt X pulse. It's a two and a half second cast. If that thing casts for two and a half seconds in a Sanguine pull, you may as well kill it twice. A surprising thing is actually the Geomancers. You would think them jumping around at random players would actually make it easier to handle them in Sanguine because they're just going to move themselves out of it. The windup for the Seismic Slam thing is actually pretty long. 0.6 71 seconds doesn't look doesn't sound like a lot that's because it's not but what is a long time is the gentle slow float they do when they try to take off and fly through the air they kind of just glide defying the laws of physics the entirety of that time they're actually being healed by sanguine so they're a bit annoying and there's not really much you can really do about them i think you can knock them back while they're in the air but other than that i don't think there's much you can do i would save my typhoon for something more important Another annoying mob is the Refty Defender. She does Spear Flurry. The bigger thing is the Demoralizing Shout. It's a 1.8 second cast. You should be interrupting this no matter what, to be honest, but usually pug groups have like no interrupts. People can't find it. They need to open the spell book, look for it. Oh shit, they didn't talent it. Anyway, I'm just talking shit about pugs at this point. But yeah, you should be interrupting this no matter what, but in Sanguine, pay special attention to it because if they cast for 1.8 seconds, they're going to be very healthy out of that Sanguine pool. The, it's rinse and repeat for the rest of the groups in the first room, so everything I said here applies to all of these other mobs because it's just the same mobs over and over again in different configurations. After the first boss, pretty much every pull is super easy. One thing to pay attention to is the Flame Caller and the Squallbringer, the two mini bosses before the Frog boss. The Flame Caller actually has two casts that are 1.4 second and 1.1 second. That doesn't sound like a lot, but they always cap in one after the other and there's no break in between, so it's a two and a half second cast. If there's something dead under Underneath her and leaves a sanguine pool for two and a half seconds. Again, you can basically kill her twice. It's a lot easier for the Squallbringer. For Whirling Fury, you're not going to be standing in that anyway, so there's usually not anything underneath him during that because you're trying to get away from him. But for Zephyr's Call, it's when he summons the little adds. Uh, he stands still and casts that. If there's something dead underneath him, he's going to get quite a bit of healing in 1.1 in second. Again, all of these casts are super short, but Sanguine heals so much that it's just a big pain in the ass. Oh, and one thing to point out is the little swaglets, they don't drop sanguine pulls, so these pulls with the swaglets are pretty easy. Another thing that's surprisingly easy is the dragon pulls. They're actually not that bad. Mobs can die on the edge of the dragon's hitbox, like the one, the big circle on the floor that denotes its hitbox. They can die on the edge of that, and the dragon won't be healed by sanguine. So it's actually pretty easy to position the mobs and make sure that the sanguine, uh, that the dragon doesn't get healed by sanguine. You can also knock back all of the mobs other than the dragons in these pulls, so it's super easy with Typhoon. You can just make sure that nothing that's low HP stays underneath the boss. Again, the gauntlet is also surprisingly easy, and the main reason because of that for that is the aqua ragers don't drop sanguine pulls but you could pull all these you could do a triple pull here and you should be perfectly fine because again it's just a repeat of this dragon pull you have the basically same mobs happening so yeah that's my prep before i go into 20 halls of infusion this is the last 20 of tyrannical week or halls of infusion did a practice run i think it was a 16 where i figured out what to do with the different tyrannical uh, situations that we have going on for different mobs and it turns out you just need to interrupt things and then everything's easy <laughs> but it also turns out that some of these mobs do weird interactions with uh, sanguine like the guys that jump are a bit annoying the refty defenders are a bit annoying i explain all of that before the video i believe unless i've decided to change something significantly these guys are kicking ass on the dps so i can keep things moving 
Very, very nice. We grab these, pull that into the next group. There we go. Kick that, capacitate and roar that, hunter that, grab that. I'm gonna taunt the guy in the be behind. Use my incarnation and go to town. Okay, so Spear Flurry does not stop when you move out of range. That's something I thought was the case, and I think I might mention that in the pre-video thing preamble. Yeah, that was the Geomancer jump that I did talk about. It's annoying as shit, and there's not much you can really do about it. I'm gonna move things away from the Spear Lady, because she's gonna be stuck casting her bullshit. I'm gonna knock everything back, because these guys were gonna start casting in Sanguine. I don't want that to happen. Very nice, and he walked through a bunch of sanguine because I wasn't, I wasn't able to do really anything about that because of his bullshit jump. Them repositioning is actually probably the most annoying part of the sanguine and this whole like first before first boss area. So the big question in this dungeon is, can your group kill the first boss? <laughs> if your group can't kill the first boss uh, well enough, that's basically run GG. Like that's a lot of lot of time lost. Uh, wiping on any boss in this dungeon really sucks because the run back is so brutal. I need to knock these back, not up, back, please finish it off. There we go. Give people movement speed. Let's move to the next group. But yeah, wiping on any boss in this dungeon really sucks. I don't know why. It, it just feels really bad and the like run back mechanics aren't exactly great either. Okay, we're getting interrupts. We're getting fears. We're getting all sorts of stuff. None of the defenders are managing to get their yells out. Their shouts, demoralizing shouts, so we're on full DPS mode the entire time. No wonder we're blasting through the damage on this. I have my Typhoon available for uh, having to, if I have to move stuff. There's going to be a couple of corpses here. The Geomancer, we're going to just knock them out like that. I think that's better than moving through a bunch of Sanguine with them. And now this is a big old pull. Interrupt that demoralizing. I have incapacitating roar for the expulsion. Expulse? Expulsion? Expulse? I think it's expulse. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, screw it. I'm gonna use incarnation here so that it might have time to reset by the add phase of the boss. Probably gonna reset sooner than that, but we'll see. Okay, so gonna die here. Ravager is getting healed a bit. Still haven't done any big mistakes, and I'm super, super happy that I decided to like take the time to clear a lower key just to get used to Sanguine. Okay, now he finally jumped out of Sanguine, one of these Geomancers. I like it. Go into this. Just keep my Iron Fur up at least a little bit here. I've been very, very bad about that. That's something I really need to work on is the Iron Fur usage. Okay, the Interrupts are coming in nice and strong here. I don't have anything for that expulse, but the group is just kicking ass. Like they're they're they mean business. They're not messing around. They're here to they're here to kick ass and take names. Or what no no no, what was it? Okay, we're gonna knock everything back out of the sanguine. I was I was not positioning that correctly, but luckily I have my get out of jail free card for uh, sanguine, which is typhoon. Okay. She died before she cast that, and that's done. We're going to give people movement speed. Jump over here. Go kitty cat form so I take less fall damage. Or no fall damage, even better. We're going to wait for healer mana because this is really intensive on the healer. I did tell Bloodlust P2. Now we're just waiting on healer mana. Once the healer mana is full, we're going to go in. He says, okay, ready? We go. I'm going to trust him. He seems to know what's up. If you didn't see him say K ready, that's because I hide my chat because people sometimes say very nasty things instead of just K ready. Okay. Here the focus is to make sure that the zones don't uh, aren't on top of the boss. It's good. I'm gonna move him now that he's got the shockwave thing going on. Got the sparks. Slowly move those, space them out so I don't have to move too much. The reason I'm moving the boss away from uh, the center is because, whatchamacallit, um, when he uh, hits 15% he moves to the center. While he's moving, I'm going to give people movement speed here so they can get into position more quickly. But uh, when he moves to the center you can keep hitting him before he gets his shield and sometimes you can get a whole percent of damage in there. Maybe not on these higher level keys, but 
on the lower level keys you can get quite a bit out of it and here you can get maybe like half a percent before he starts infusing and becomes more powerful okay add phase is coming he's gonna we're gonna get yeah about half a percent of damage so it wasn't okay 0.6 percent damage that's not bad at all my job right now is to make sure these die quickly by grouping them up so people can cleave them fucking come over to me there we go just need to make sure these die quickly keep smashing them I'm gonna stand in that I'm gonna use my survival instincts just to make sure that that goes off he's gonna hit 20 stacks which is unfortunate we're gonna give the healer uh, innervate here Titanic fists no we're gonna give him on the big AoE there we go. We're gonna give him Innervate. He can spam whatever the hell he wants. Very nice, very nice. And then on the next one I'm gonna use my heal. Uh, Nature's Vigil. Power Overload. We're gonna give people movement speed so they can get where they need to go. I got smacked by that. I don't really give a shit. That's not gonna kill me. Just gotta make sure we don't drop these on top of our melee. Very good. He's gonna do his static thing. Now is the time for me to use Nature's Vigil. The healer did go down. I do have a battle res available for the healer once this is over. Just gonna use a frenzied region here. Healer's almost dead. But by almost dead, I mean I'm waiting for him to get um, the, for his stupid like uh, Valkyrie form or whatever. Angel Guardian Angel form. I, I got flustered there. I forgot what it was called, but I was waiting for that to finish so that I could actually cast my battle res on him. Okay. This is the last time he does this. He's dead here. We don't have to worry about another one of these sets of zones. That should make it a lot easier. Those zones are basically what kill you on this boss fight. Nice. We killed the first boss. I'm very confident about this group clearing the rest of the dungeon. They're doing great. They're kicking things. It's it's looking very, very good. We're going to give movement speed to this guy. Because he's all the way behind us. Ah, yes. He guides others to a treasure he cannot possess. He gave us all levitate, but didn't give it to himself. We spend a bit of time swimming. All right, we're gonna drag these slowly but surely. I gotta just make sure I kick this. I'm gonna incapacitating roar just to make sure those don't go through because those are really, really a huge pain in the ass. Lots and lots of damage. Holding aggro. Just looking back to see if I'm holding aggro. And we got the little froggies. I'm not gonna use my uh, what you called Ursal's vortex here because there's gonna be a bunch of low HP mobs. We're going to knock everything around. This guy's casting. Don't want him to die just yet. Keep everything moving. Shock Trooper's going to get healed quite a bit here. I don't like that. But yeah, there wasn't a better way to handle that. A better way to handle that would have been to just not pull all of those together. But it, and I think it worked out. It's only about, what, 500k Sanguine healing? That's not much at all. I'm going to give people movement speed again. I'm going to drag these down there. That was the plan, at least in uh, the route that I had planned out. I'm going to spam swipe here because there's the invisible mobs. you got to make sure you don't uh, sleep on those. Frenzied region here. And we're going to drop these little swaglets in. The nice thing about the swaglets is that they do not drop... Whatchamacallit? We're going to drop... They don't drop sanguine. Oh, I'm getting my ass kicked. I'm going to use incarnation here. Did drop... Ursal's Vortex on top of the Swaglets to keep everything nice and grouped up. We're going to start kiting things. Nothing's affected by Ursal's Vortex anymore. That Tart Trap's actually kind of causing some issues for me. Is anything in Sanguine? No, nothing's in Sanguine. Things are in Sanguine now. We're going to knock back. Make sure that things get out of Sanguine. Because they were casting and there wasn't... I couldn't just kite them. There we go. We finished that off before it was an issue. Very, very nice. Now we have this group coming in. Uh, it's just important to kick the shock troopers. There's not much else to do here. Ooh, shit. That's really bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, healer. Incapacitating roar and kick this one. Ooh. Spicy. Yeah, I need to take better care of my health. And I can't just charge in here. I have to actually go in swiping. Frenzied region here. I used two stacks of frenzied region here because I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Things kind of died off at the same time there. And very nice. This was actually really, really good. I'm going to start with this. Oh, okay. This guy kicks it. This guy's really on top of his kicks. I like it, dude. I like having people that really kick very, very often. Pretty much whenever it's off cooldown, that guy has been kicking something. So this is wonderful. 
if you keep these two guys spread out like this, like on each side of you, you should be able to avoid if one of them dies that the other one is left standing and the other guy is sanguine. Uh, usually the caster goes down first. Okay, I guess they're just going to stack because they kind of decided to move in a weird way. Nice, we got a kick on the heel. I'm going to move the melee guy away from the caster guy or gal. Come on now, finish off the caster. It's the casters down. It'd be easy. Okay, he's not in sanguine because we were, they were on either side of me. Easy mode, dude. The little uh, Zephyrling things are going to stand in some of the sanguines sometimes, but I don't really give a shit about them. They disappear once he's dead, so it doesn't really matter too much. Probably shouldn't be standing in that, huh? Alright, buddy, just fall over already. And there we go. Very nice. Give people movement speed. Healer's doing just fine on mana, because that wasn't really an intense fight. Now here, I just hope people kite the little... Froglets, swaglets, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to use my incarnation here. It came up just in time. Very nice. It was probably up for part of that last fight, but I didn't really want to have to deal with it. I'm going to use my uh, group heal here. And we just need people to actually kite these into the gulp. That guy's not kiting it into the gulp, which is very annoying. This was also not kited into a gulp. Okay, so the first time he casts the thing that drops adds on top of you, or he will cast gulp right after it but the next time he casts the add thing he's going to wait a bit before he's going to do this toxic effusion and then he's going to do uh whatchamacallit it's the over uh the gulp so you have to actually kite the ads for longer so here's this okay we're gonna move to this side hopefully people come over to me that that was probably the bad choice was for me to move this side but I think it'll work out. I use Ursal's Vortex to make the little swaglets go back. Should be casting Gulp here in a second. Very nice. Perfect. That was that was beautiful. The first one was a bit shaky because uh, people didn't kite into it. So we had a couple of swaglets left. But the second one we did. C'est magnifique. Uh, it, it was just beautiful. Just waiting to see what happens next. Okay, it's the croak. Okay, and we're going to give people movement speed and kite away from the little swaglets. There's the toxic effusion I talked about. We're going to keep our distance here. I'm going to cast gulp here in a second. I don't have the gathering thing, but we kited them all in. This group is so good. I love these guys. They, they know what's up. I'm pretty sure they've done this before because people sometimes get lost when I do the kite away thing. And a lot of people don't even know that you're supposed to kite the frogs into the gulp. They just kind of run around and run away and try to kite them and shit, and it's really annoying. Here's the overpowering gulp. We're going to just run to the other side. I don't have movement speed to give, but it shouldn't be an issue. When he starts casting Toxic Effusion, we can stop. I have Ursal's Vortex. Going to drop that right there in the back. There's going to be one little frog. Oh, no, they're all going in. Okay, 6 million health left. I'm going to use my Incarnation again. I probably should have used it sooner. I was so distracted with the kiting that I just... I didn't didn't process that I could use it. Because, uh, truth be told, I'm a little bit new to this as well. To this kiting thing. I haven't been doing it much. Before, I used to just kind of wing it. Let people do whatever. Because the boss fight didn't last for very long. But here we got, I think that was the fourth overpowering croak. So it was... Uh, it can be pretty rough. I'm going to grab the patrol once they start coming back up here. For now, we're just focusing on this. We do have a priest, so we should have an MD coming through to get rid of that deep chill. Okay, deep chill is on me. I'm going to use frenzied region here to recover from the breath. The breath shouldn't one-shot me, so I don't have to really move out of it. That's a nice thing about tyrannical. At least on a 20. I don't know about later keys. Later keys probably everything one-shots you regardless of who's above. <laughs> okay, we're looking at the... Guys are probably going to die sooner than the dragon, so I'm going to have to knock him back. This guy's dying now. We're going to knock him back so the, the pool is not on top of the dragon. See, the pool is on the corner of the dragon's hitbox, and it's not healing him. So I think that's that's pretty generous, to be completely honest. Okay, we're going to let this guy die while he walks over to us. 
I am not going to pull that extra patrol. I like the segment these pulls. The dragons are very, very heal intensive. Deep chill is coming in. I'm going to give Innervate to the healer so he can use his MD without a mana cost. I believe he can. I'm going to use a frenzied regen here to recover from that. Anything? I didn't use the frenzied regen. I guess I failed my global. But we're doing quite well here. Yeah, it turned out surprisingly when I was doing my little test runs, it turned out that these guys are not that rough. I accidentally body pulled. This is completely on me. I'm going to survival instincts here. Dragon should die first. Please kill dragon first. Okay, the primal guy, he's, he's also gone. This is beautiful. I fucked up by body pulling this, but we recovered because the group was just beast mode. They're blasting the DPS. Yeah, this guy's doing 200k DPS. Bloodlust just came off cooldown, or rather I should say Sated just went away. And now we can... Come on, interrupt that guy. Very nice. Good, thank you. Come on, somebody interrupt that. I did have an interrupt myself, but if I charge in to interrupt it, it's just going to stand still for a second, and it's better if somebody else interrupts it. I'm going to use Incarnation here, because I'm more scared of this personally. I'm more scared of this pull than I am of the boss. Although I, that's probably not the right call, right? I should probably be using all my damage on the boss. I'm walking away because I don't want to get hit by that uh, Dragon Breath. I'm going to save my, uh, whatchamacallit. I'm going to knock these guys back and I'm going to charge into this one. No, I'm putting the dragon into the fucking thing. Sorry. I fucked up big time. Ah, oh, shit. That's so much wasted damage. God damn it. Anyway, I gotta, I gotta recover. I gotta recover. Focus up. Oh, no, not again. No, no, no. Report me. Yeah, I just healed the dragon twice. That was 8 million sanguine. I'm gonna use a frenzied region. Oh, man. I was doing so well the entire dungeon, and then I do this. We're going to wait for mana for the healer. Yes, we're waiting for mana. Waiting for him to give me the go-ahead. That seems to be enough. He said ready on the last one. Okay, we go. I'm going to bring her close to this because we have melee. Yeah. We want bloodlust here. There's the Frost Cyclone, very good. It was baited away from this pillar, so that's good. I'm gonna move her closer, as close as I can, so maybe potentially melee can hit oh, through the Hellstorm good. by standing behind this pillar. I'm gonna stay here. I can hit for sure, because Guardian Druid has some ridiculous range on its melee attacks, so I can use my Maul and everything through the pillar. I don't know about uh, the other classes in here, or I should say the Demon Hunter is the only other melee. But um, for Guardian Druid, it's pretty easy mode. Air Tornado. Yeah, that's really bad. He baited the Tornado on top of that. But we can move over to this one. This oh, one's still okay. safe. Yeah, he moved uh, to cover sooner before the Tornado was out. You're not supposed to stand behind cover until the Tornado is out. We're going to use Incarnation here. And I'm going to use my, um, whatchamacallit, the group heal that I keep forgetting its name. Nature's Vigil. Gonna give this guy a quick battle res. Gonna give this guy a quick battle res like I just said, but I didn't. Okay. We needed all the damage we can get and they were topping DPS. I don't know what happened. They probably just accidentally stood in something. That's perfectly fine. Gonna move her over closer to this pillar to let the melee DPS keep going. Once she does her thingy thing. I don't know if the guy can reach it or not. Hopefully he can. I don't know if I'm helping him or not. I'm going to do her glacial thing. That's going to remove these zones. Oh. No, it's not. Okay, we have a new one over here. I need to move her over here. Just make sure nobody's... Okay, that frost cyclone is fine. We're going to bring it close to this. Because we need to be next to one that isn't cracked. Maybe I should also move behind the pillar. That works out. This healer's a beast, dude. He, I, you can't even tell he's fighting the hardest. 
well, not hardest, but it's a very heal intensive boss, and usually you see a lot of healers go oom here, so. This was really, really impressive by this healer. He was half mana, basically. And I didn't even innervate him because I always forget that spell exists, to be completely honest with you. Go out of kitty cat form here so I can do that. We're going to start dragging these. One thing that uh, that's really nice here is that the Aqua Ragers don't actually drop Sanguine Zones. So, like, this, these bulls are super, super easy. I keep them nice and simple. Uh, just pull up to this, then next is the dragon. After the dragon, you do the other group before the... Uh, mini boss and then you just like the mini boss is always just the mini boss so it's never an issue okay waiting for the ice caller is gonna die first and then i'm gonna knock the earth shaker back like so oh i got stunned but that's fine i got a guardian angel okay i'll take it i'm not gonna say no don't look a gifted guardian angel in the wings they say i'm gonna wait for that to pass and then i'll charge in Yo, somebody's blasting the DPS, took my aggro away from me. i use Incarnation here. I'm probably slacking on the use of Incarnation. Maybe I need to make that weak aura more prominent so that I can see when I can use it. Uh, again, Aqua, Aqua Ragers don't drop Sanguine Zones, so I'm perfectly safe keeping everything here right as it is right now. Just gonna use a frenzied region to immediately recover any health I lose from the um, from the breath. Okay, getting ready to go to the next group. It's coming from this side, so I'm gonna charge towards this side so I don't accidentally get hit by that. When you're standing right behind this, by the way, you don't get knocked back by the wave, like you can see here. What you do get is your ass beat because you're talking about random shit <laughs> instead of actually focusing on keeping your health bar nice. Yeah, he's incapacitating roar here. I can actually remove some of these enrages. I don't think it matters. Okay, the ice collar is going to go down first, which is good. That's the target you're supposed to focus. Once the ice collar dies, we're going to knock back the Gale Slinger. There we go. We're going to grab her. Wait for these Sanguine to go away. There we go. Sanguine's gone. We can keep her in this safe spot. You can stand in Flash Flood, not with this amount of health probably, but you can stand in Flash Flood and get knocked back into this. You won't go anywhere, so you can keep her nice and still for your group to DPS, especially if they have damage zones that they need to drop. Sure. Dude, this group has been kicking ass on the interrupts. It's been amazing, dude. It's so beautiful to see. I'm not used to it, to be completely honest with you. And get hit by this flash flood, I'll use Rage of the Sleeper. Whoopsie daisy. I do have a charge, so I can just charge back like that. I'm just standing in it because I'm a little bit lazy, to be completely honest with you. Like, there's no need to stand in it. You, you have plenty of time to move out of the range of it. But I, I'm not worried about losing my health or dying here or anything like that. Yeah, there we go. I wasn't lazy for once. <laughs> there we go. Finish off that Rager, and then it's the Infuser. Let's see if we can... Uh, the Inundate will go through, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to kill this while we're kiting, then we'll recover before the boss. We have ten and a half minutes for the boss. That should be easy mode. Let's interrupt that, keep this thing moving. Okie dokie. We're not going to even get a third Bloodlust. We just got two Bloodlusts. That's how quickly we've been moving through the, through the dungeon. Maybe Bloodlusting first pull would have been a thing, but then you don't have it for the... Boss, just waiting on mana. Gee, the healer says they're ready, so we're gonna go. And we zug zug. Here, as a tank, your job is to make sure that when you get knocked back by the squall buffet, you have a defensive up, and there's no none of these orbs are behind you. Because if you fly into those orbs, you're dead. You're basically dead. You can use frenzied region. Here I can stand further away from the boss for a little bit while these orbs explode. Even though the rest of the time you want to be in the range of the boss, uh, right now you, uh, during if there's a bunch of circles there, you, there's no reason for you to stand while he's casting the infusion thing. So you don't need to be in melee range during that. I'm going to use my Healy heal here for the group. Help out with the healing a bit. Maybe I should help out with healing myself as well. Use a frenzied regen. But yeah, when you get knocked back, just make sure there's nothing behind you. Have a defensive up, ideally. 
or use a frenzied regen charge to self heal through the damage of the whatchamacallit of that infusion and you don't have to stand in melee range for that the rest of the time the reason you really have to stand in melee range is because uh whatchamacallit it's uh, the other, if you're not in melee range, the boss will keep meleeing someone. They will melee someone who's right, um, whatchamacallit. Okay, we have mind control on that one. Sorry, I interrupted myself because I just needed to, uh... Okay, that one's caged. Ah, shit, I think I hit it accidentally. I do have knockback. I'm gonna knock back this inundate. I don't want this to go through. There's no reason to take that damage, right? So, I can interrupt this. Do have another interrupt. Where is our hunter? Our hunter is really far away. Yeah, I don't have anything, but we do have CC, right? We can we can interrupt that. We seem to be interrupting. I didn't see any go through yet. I'm gonna have incapacitating roar for this one, but we also have that knockback, and we can soon res our hunter friend. As soon as I figure out where his corpse is, there we go. We're gonna res him. There he goes. Very good. Poor hunters. They're always so squishy have another, um, what we'll call it, Nature's Vigil up, so I can actually heal. Oof, I just stood in that just to read what Nature's Vigil was called, because I keep forgetting. Okay, I got Guardian Angel here again. Just making sure I stay in melee range. Now I can move away while the infused, focused infusion is going. Or focused deluge, or whatever the fuck that thing's called. I keep calling it the wrong thing, but the beam. When you get hit by the beam, you can stay out of melee range, because he's not going to auto-attack anyone during cast of that. Tempest going through. It's a little bit infused, so it hurt pretty bad. I think we're going to get a second uh, submerge. Yeah, it's going through in three seconds, so we're definitely going to get a second one. But after that, I think the boss is dead, because by the time we're back, we're going to have Bulla once back up. Yeah, we're going to have Bloodlust available, so that'll be nice. Next one's coming down this side. have time to move over here. Use my kitty cat dash. Just gonna make sure we deactivate those. Once you reach this, they deactivate. This is the whatever the fuck that guy's called. We need some CC on these. We need a demon hunter to come over. Incapacitating roar. This guy did. Just use that. We're going to knock this back to interrupt it. Okay, we have that trap. This is caged. I don't have to worry about those. We can do those one at a time. We have plenty of time to take this slow, so there's no reason to. Uh, interrupt those and get those out of there. Last time I fucked up and I think I hit one that was in a uh, in a cage and that was kind of what caused a lot of issues and did a lot of damage to us and probably stressed out the healer. Healer's at full mana right now so I'm not too worried about that. You have incapacitating roar available for this so it's not going to go through. Very nice. We do have nature's vigil back up. We have bloodlust. This is looking good. This is looking like a kill. I think it dies before the next submerge. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm going to use the group heal. Nature's Vigil. Okay, this should be a safe spot for me to get squalled. I'm going to use my survival instincts on this squall buffet. There it is. Very nice. Focus Deluge. I'm going to use a self heal on that. I'm also getting Guardian Spirit. There we go. That's Keystone Hero. We now have all the portals. Everything is done on plus 20 on Tyrannical Week. Now we just need to do it on Fortified. Fuck yeah, dude. This is going so well. So in this episode, we cleared a 16 or 17 halls of infusion to get familiar with how the trash works when it comes to Sanguine. Sanguine's very specific because you have to actually keep kiting things in ways you never otherwise would. And not being familiar with how the trash interacts with Sanguine can really mess up a dungeon. Case in point, just take a look at my Nelthoros run where I had 76 million healing done with by Sanguine and we almost didn't time it purely because I was sucking ass. Luckily my group was amazing, so it was a good time. So now I have a timed 20 clear on every dungeon dungeon on uh, Tyrannical, and I just have to do Fortified and we're done with the series. I say just, but I think it's going to be harder than Tyrannical, in my honest opinion. Especially stuff like Brackenhide, but we'll get into that in the next episode. Speaking of which, in the next episode I'm going to be doing a 20 clear of I don't know which dungeon on Fortified. Anyway, that's it for the recap. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.